So today's blog is going to focus on Utility Network Trace Configurations and Experience Builder's Utility Network Trace Widget, which is currently in beta. So first we're going to go through creating the web map that we will then publish to ArcGIS Online, and we'll use that web map uh, in Experience Builder. Um, we'll add a new, we'll create a new project, we'll add the necessary widgets, and we'll even add a couple additional widgets, uh, the text widget and the table widget, to show how we can visualize and export the results of the trace. So to start out, I am in Arc Pro and I am signed into my portal with the utility network user that has uh, the correct licensing. Um, I've gone in and basically gone to my utility network feature service and just added it to a new map here. And I've done a, a little bit of modification. So when I brought it in, it was, you know, they were all under the layer sanitary utility network. And so I brought those all out individually on their own. And then I created a, a couple group layers, one for devices and one for lines, because I'm going to uh, use, I want a little bit more specificity. I want to be able to grab these asset groups um, in my text widget and experience builder. So basically created a group layer for devices and then just copied the device layer into that group uh, four times and put definition queries on those. So asset group equals manhole channel, service connection pump, etc. So I did that for devices and I did that for lines to get the force main laterals and gravity mains. So once we've got that all set up, um, the next thing to do is going to be to add a trace configuration. So some of the functions that we do in the utility network, we have to do uh, with topology disabled and we do that client server. So we do that on the database itself. So this is not one of those instances. So when you create your uh, trace configuration, you're gonna do that on the service. So now you can do that right in this map. So we'll go to geoprocessing. I've already got that pulled up. We're going to make sure that um, there's two add trace configurations. There's one for the trace network and one for utility network. So make sure you grab that one. Um, we're going to just choose our utility network and we're going to give this a name. So I've already created an upstream one. So I'm just going to call this downstream demo. I'm going to copy this into the description. We'll just give this a tag, and this is where we're gonna choose what type of trace. Um, so I'm going to choose the downstream trace, and then it's going to ask me for some additional information. I'm gonna choose my domain, which is the sewer, and then the tier, I'm focused on the sewer collection system, and then within that, the sewer collection system, and now you can see some some defaults pop up here. Validate consistency, just wanna go over what that, that means real quick. So basically with that checked, Anywhere there is a dirty area that intersects your trace results, um, that trace result will stop at the dirty area. So this is going to exclude any new features you've added, but anything that you've done, if you've deleted uh, an asset, if you've changed it and you have that dirty area and you run your trace, it intersects, it will stop. So just keep that in mind. Um, and we don't really have time in this blog to go through um, everything here, all these different parameters, but um, when when we did f fill out the, the domain network and tier, we did get some default condition barriers. So really quick, connectivity versus traversability. So connectivity basically describes the state where you have two or more features that either share a connectivity association or a collection of features that are geometrically coincident at an endpoint or midspan at a vertex. And basically that there is a connectivity rule that exists that basically supports their relationship. So traversability, on the other hand, describes the state where two features that are connected also have a path between them that satisfies the trace configuration. And we can see that here. Um, and then uh, within that traversability, we have condition barriers. And if we scroll down a little bit more, um, we have function barriers. So these are some defaults. So this condition barrier um, enables the user to create barriers that would stop at a traversability barrier when conditions are set by either a network category or a network attribute. So in this case, we have a network attribute device status and the uh, trace will stop if the device is equal to closed. It's also going to stop if the, the network attribute lifecycle status does not equal in service or to be retired. And then as far as function barriers go, um, 
those use network attributes and function operators to establish barriers. So that could be, it could do things like restricting how far the trace could go by saying add, you know, shape length greater than 20. So that trace would stop um, when this has been satisfied. So we're going to close out of that. And then you could go further to say, you know, uh, how you want that to apply that traversability. And so you have some options down here. Um, it, and then you can do functions. So you could also calculate shape length and you could display those in your results. Um, you could also decide how you want your output to be displayed. So if you only wanted to see things such as, you know, fittings, uh, a plug, um, very various uh, features, you can set that there and then you can even put conditions on them. But for this purpose, we're going to leave everything uh, as the default here. So just again, the name, the type, um, our networks, and then we're going to go ahead and run. All right, so now that that has published successfully, we need to make sure that the trace is shared. So we're at the Utility Network tab on the Data tab in the Tools section, and we're going to click the little arrow, and we're going to go down to Sharing. And so I already had the upstream trace shared in this map, so now I'm just going to check the box so that I have my downstream map shared. So now here I'm logged into my portal, but I actually want to publish this to ArcGIS Online because I'm going to use Experience Builder in ArcGIS Online because the trace widget is not available in 1091 for Enterprise. And that is because um, Esri updates AGO uh, four times a year and your Enterprise is only updated when you upgrade. And this uh, trace widget came out, I believe, in the March update. So we need to switch our active portal to ArcGIS Online. And then I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna go to Share, and I'm gonna share it as a web map. I've got some things on here. I'm gonna choose my folder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and share.